Welcome back everybody, this is Felix. In this tutorial, we're finally going to run our simulation using this test bench that we coded in the last tutorial. And previously we set up our state machine module. So that is really what we're looking at testing here. We're making sure that everything in here works exactly as expected. So now that we've got the test bench and the module set up, over here in your simulator tab, make sure your test bench is selected and then come down here under iSim simulator and double click simulate behavior. And that will launch iSim, which is this guy right here. The first thing you'll see are these green lines in this window. This is a time plot of the values which are displayed over here. We've got our wires and registers from State Machine Test Bench. And if we look over here in that file, sure enough, we see clock reset button and L. Those are the things we defined, and those are the ones that are showing up by default in here. We're not currently looking at the entire scope from time zero to, it looks like it's run one microsecond and we can scroll in here but if you want to look at all of it together you can come up here and click this full zoom button and it lays it out really nicely right in this window and now we can actually see our clock is oscillating back and forth and it looks like it's going at about one inversion per 10 nanoseconds. That's what we told it to do, so that's very good. If we look at the reset, we see it started out in the reset state for two clock cycles and then it dropped low, which is exactly what we told it to do. Perfect. But it looks like button has not gone high yet. We haven't pushed the button at this point in the simulation so we want to advance it a little bit further. To do that you can come up here to this box and type in how much time you want to add to the simulation. You could do one microsecond, you could do 20 microseconds, you could do nanoseconds, you just would change the units here and it'll handle however much time you want to add and then you click the little triangle with the hourglass next to it and it'll add that much time. So you can see now we're at 21 microseconds. And then if we zoom it again, we see that the clock is starting to get kind of blurry, but button has now one of the times that we pressed it. If we want to run the simulation all the way to the end, regardless of how much time it takes, you can click this Run All button. And it'll bring up the test bench file pointing to the finish line. So we want to go back over here to the default wire config file. And you'll see it stopped at 68 microseconds which it also tells us down here as soon as we hit the run all button. Let's zoom on this guy. Okay. Now, this is the entire length of the simulation and it looks like we have a little issue so reset was fine, the button is looking fine as some of our inputs, but our output L, the three bits that are hooked up to the LED, they only change one time. We can look over here at the individual values, and sure enough, the bits two and one are always zero, and bit zero changes right here and that's the only one that changes. So that's not quite what we were looking for. Let's investigate this a little bit further to see if we can discover anything about what's happening. 
a good place to start would be to look inside the registers of our state machine module. That would be the device undergoing testing, right? So we can open this guy and you can see here's his little clock one module that we instantiated. Here is always blocks and those are the same always blocks. See we have two always blocks in the state machine file. Those are the same two always blocks shown here. And if you click on these always blocks or the DUT, you can see all of the objects in there. And for our debugging purposes, these last five are probably ones we want to monitor over here. So to get those added to the wire config, click on the top one and then you can shift click on the bottom one to select all of them and either right click add to wave window or you can hit control W and it drops them in right over here but you'll notice it does not have the waveforms yet and that's because we need to reset everything first and then run everything again we'll come back to the wire config and zoom and now we have readings on these five different registers and wires. These appear to be doing what they should be. They're changing periodically. Uh, but I notice that the slow clock, clock one hertz, which ironically is not one hertz anymore, but our slow clock only has one positive edge. But we do see that L changes its value to T right when this clock ticks. So that actually is good. That's what we wanted it to do. So perhaps the only issue is that our clock is too slow. If we make it about 20 times faster, maybe it'll behave like we're wanting. To do that, here's a nice little trick. You can click on the object that you want to inspect. If you double click it, it'll open up the file that it's in and take you right to it. So here's our slow clock. And if we just make this 20 times faster, we can save that file. And then we need to reset everything, so just close out of this. Don't save wire config. And then if you click on this again, it'll say, do you want to reload it because you made changes? You hit yes. And now we see that our changes have been put into the ISC tab. Now we just want to run it again, so double click this, we'll open it back up. And let's add that clock just for reference. Back it up, run the whole thing, and zoom in. Aha! That looks a lot more like we, what we want to see. We've got our L changing during times where the button is pressed. And if you look at the slow clock, look, when the button is pressed and then we get a positive edge on the clock, that's when L changes to the next state. Look, the button is high, positive edge, change. The button is still high, positive edge, change, and so on. So it seems that this is behaving exactly how we want it. So hopefully you have a little bit of a better idea how to use iSIM to monitor all of your different registers and wires from the different parts of your circuit. And this is a super useful tool for diagnosing things. In this case, it turned out that everything was okay, but it may not always be. And this is way easier to be able to debug things looking at all of the individual signals rather than just wondering and staring at your code 
and thinking, hmm, it didn't work. I wonder what's going on inside that black box FPGA chip. If you do have more questions about the iSIM program, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. See you next time.